All right, former Department of Justice prosecutor Joseph Moreno is closely following this trial uh, from Washington. He joins us live now. Thank you so much for being with us. A couple of questions here. What do you make of uh, Todd Blanche's strategy throughout the cross-examination, first and foremost? I mean, this idea of painting Michael Cohen as a liar, not exactly difficult when you consider campaign finance violations, false statements to Congress, tax fraud as well. Um, but is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough to convince jurors that he's lying about the heart of what is at stake in this hush money trial? Hi, Zane. Well, I mean, I, I practiced law with Todd Blanche for several years. I can say he's a very, very talented litigator. Uh, and I have to think that he has a sense of what the jury is hearing from their body language, their eye contact, basically the feedback he's getting. And so obviously what he has to do is he has to undermine Michael Cohen's testimony. And we've heard over the last few weeks a lot of ancillary evidence about Donald Trump. We've heard that he was very focused on the, elec the, the election in 2016 and his image among female voters. We heard that he was very picky uh, about every expense that the organization would incur, including personally writing checks. Um, we've also heard that he's told people, take care of this. What's missing, of course, is what Michael Cohen can provide. What did Donald Trump know? Was he aware that the accounting entries were done in a surreptitious way that were meant to camouflage their ultimate purpose? And did he have the intent to evade the law, whether it's campaign finance laws or other kind of fraud. And so Michael Cohen has to provide the prosecution with that key component. So it makes a lot of sense that the defense would undercut him any way they can, showing his side incentives to lie, showing his past lies, showing that he's an unreliable witness. Because at the end of the day, that's probably what this is coming down to. Does the jury believe Michael Cohen or does the jury believe Donald Trump? And that's going to be the key question. At what point, because it's already established, he's already admitted and served time for lying, at what point did Michael Cohen start telling the truth? Given everything that you've seen from the defense thus far, Joseph, and from how Michael Cohen has been composed himself and how he's been handling some of these tougher questions, do you expect a redirect once again from the prosecution? Uh, and if so, what is it you think they should be focused on? Sure, Bianna. I would have to think so. I mean, it sounds like the defense is doing a pretty decent job of sort of battering up uh, Michael Cohen, of sort of beating up a little bit on the stand. And so I definitely think the prosecution will want to rehabilitate him a little bit, probably not go overboard. There is always a risk that a jury can kind of overhear things and kind of get tired of it. So my guess is that the prosecution does a redirect, they'll keep it to the point. They'll keep it to two or three questions. Basically, why are you here? Are you telling the truth? And is the information that you've provided accurate? He'll say yes, yes, yes. That'll be the end of it. All right, Joseph Moreno, live for us there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Appreciate Amy. it. Thanks, Joseph.